yesterday. I have a friend who helps me cutting up the leftovers from the renovation for firewood. That's what you hear in the background. Time to mark the tenons on the seat and cut them. So let's get on with that. Approximate middle here. Okay, now I will take the measurements of the tenon, the thickness. It's 49 millimeters and uh, the width of it was 120. So I'll make a mortise of 120 and, and 50. I will put the seat a little bit in front to get enough seating area because of the, the angle of the back piece and also not to make it tip backwards when you sit in it. 205 and then move the mark 50 millimeters to the front and just mark out for the mortise it was 49 thick so I will make it 50 so I have some margin because this is a bench that's likely to be used outside a bit the margins are too small then it might swell from the moisture in the air and be very hard to take apart without breaking.
drill with a brace because you get a better feel for the material. And now I have penetrated the wood on the, the other side here. I can feel the snail popping out, so I will stop. Let's make one more turn to make the hole a little bit easier to find. Yeah, and the snail that I mentioned, that's the conical screw tip in the front of the drill bit. And its job is to pull the drill bit into the wood. Here's the series of holes from the snail. And this is of course to prevent any nasty tear out doing it like this. Gives you a nice clean cut. chips then you damage the line. chisel would press into the wood and make a dent in the line. That's why I leave two or three millimeters first. Time to cutting up to the line now. Since this is a rustic be bench, I am just putting the chisel on the line and start cutting. But the proper way, of course, would be to mark it with a marking knife first. This isn't actually a marking knife, it's a carving knife. But yeah, most of my tools are out in the carport. I can't find all of them now. Cut the line a couple of times to make it deeper, thus creating a knife wall. use the combination square not completely 90 degrees yet better yep. 
looks more like it. Let's see if I can flip it around now. This is the test fitting. Now you can start getting the general idea of the bench. It's still missing the back piece of course. And I haven't made any grooves for the seat. I could just use the mortise and tenon joint but it's much stronger if you have a, a groove that supports the entire width of the seat. Marking pen. Follow the under side of the bench and also the shape in the back of the seat here because I leave the live edge here this groove is a little bit special since it doesn't run all the way across the board what I usually do is make two saw cuts and then chisel out in between them. This time I will uh, have to start with the chisel and then finish with the router plane, my trusty Stanley 71. here still. Now we're getting closer. mentioning when you put your chisel away put it with the bevel down that way your edge won't touch the surface you put it on and there's no chance of you damaging it Oh, 
plane. One of my favorite tools. Chisel in here that lowers to the desired depth. Okay, it's uh, set a little bit deep, but I don't think it's any problem. It's a very soft wood. Now I'm gonna set the combination square to 10 millimeters. It's not there yet. Lowering the blade a bit. Since you're using this as a reference surface which the plane sole is running on top of then the groove won't be more consistent than this. I did plane it sort of okay but it won't be totally perfect. It will definitely be good enough for this bench though. fitting of this hopefully yeah looks like a good fit to me and I'll do the other one them and take out a 90 degree angle on both ends and then I'll mark out and cut the tenons. Yeah, no problem. Short line, rule, pen. Let's go.
these tenons will not be centered in the board. And that's because there will be an angle to the back. So I will have to put the tenon further down and a small half tenon. So I'll have to decide where to put this. There is some variation or discrepancy between the two pieces. This is the one that's a little bit thinner on the top half. So I will use that as reference so I don't use the wider one and have too little material when I come to this one. I'll try to find the angle from the seat and up. I made a mark one meter up from the floor. I will let the piece protrude a little bit behind the side console and I'll plane it down to match it. Not by much, but a little bit so I can get a decent angle on the back. So if it's 35 I will just put a mark at 25 and be happy with that. Down here I will mark it at 35. Just run a line from the one meter mark down to 40 centimeters because that's the approximate width of the back piece. Mark the thickness of 35 and also up here just before I go off the edge. There we are. So there is plenty of room to put the big mortise and tenon through here. But I will not mark it here until I have cut the tenon on the back piece. I will have to measure from the center line down since the live edge is so irregular. I almost forgot about the half tenon. 8 centimeters up from the center line, 5 centimeters wide, 2 centimeters deep. And that will support the top part of the back.
Yeah, that will be fine. So this half tenon will be cut away on one side. Not sure which side is which right now. I think this is the front side, which means the bottom half of it will be cut, cut away later. I decided not to film when I cut the tenons on the other side since you already saw the first side. I think it's enough to show it one time. So I'll get back to you when it's time for the next step, which is marking and cutting the mortises on the side pieces. Okay, I have finished the tenons on both sides of the back, apart from uh, one cut on the half tenon. And I also laid out the mortises on the side pieces. As you can see here, here's the through tenon, the big one that will be fitted with the wedge on the outside. And here is the half tenon. This piece is number one and this end of the back is marked number one. So then we know that the front half of this will stay and the back half of it will be cut away. So I will do that now. Yeah, approximately like this, this piece goes away. I have set the combination square to 20 millimeters. I'm going to use that as a gauge. Run it along with a pencil like this. Do the sides as well. Half goes away. And this time I will use a small tenon saw that I have. It's not very good or anything, but it will do the trick. And to get it a good starting point, I'll cut away on the waste material side into the knife wall. that cleaning up the knife wall a bit. Now you have a good groove to start your saw cutting. Stopping just before the edge so I don't make any nasty tear outs. And I'll do that from another angle like that. And the way the combination square was set up, this is going to be a cut where I remove the line entirely. Sometimes you cut up to the line, sometimes you cut the line away. Since there is an angle to this groove on the mortises, I need to cut the lines on all four sides to avoid tear out because it doesn't run straight with the fibers in any direction. It runs on the diagonal a little bit. So this is the half mortise. 
this won't go all the, the way through, it will go down to the depth of 20 millimeters. Or to avoid any junk getting into the mortise and clogging it up, I'll make it slightly deeper than 20. It's nice to have a slightly smaller chisel to clean out the waste with, so it doesn't get lodged in between the sides of the mortise. You know what, I'm fooling both you and myself. I forgot to take the groove in account. I need to go down to 30 because the groove will be 10. So I'll set the gauge to 30 and chop a little bit more. I am just under 30 here, so that's, that's very good. Now I will chop out the big one. Before I did the other mortises I drilled out first. Uh, I'll try without doing that now, just chop it without taking the material away first. <laughs>
not shit at all. Looks totally okay, I think. A little bit of cleanup. All right, I'll pair it out quickly. Quick test fit to see if I put them in the right place. Minor adjustments. Normally, I would take it to the bench again, but uh, our neighbors invited us to barbecue. Uh, my girlfriend's already down there. I'm a little bit late myself, so I want to finish this. Quickly, so I can also call it a day. Okay. Yeah, much better. Now that I have it here, I will just mark the live edges. So I'll do the other. The other side with the mortises and then the grooves tomorrow. After that it's time to mark out where the wedges will go and cut those hole holes and make wedges. I'll make wedges out of oak probably. Because if you make wedges of the same soft wood as this, the wedges won't fit after a couple of times. I've had that experience on other furniture I've made. And also people use a metal hammer, soft wood wedges will uh, deform or crack easier than oak, so better to use oak or some other type of hardwood, whatever you have, but I have oak so I will use it. Okay, let's continue tomorrow. I'll go down to the barbecue now. <laughs> 